Uh, well, you already mentioned him, Tommy. Um, you started c collaborating in, in 2008. Um, do you still recall your first meeting? Yeah. Yeah, I went around his. Um, I went around his house, and I'd, I had a record out called Park Bench Series, and I think he was expecting some. Um, he was expecting some um, kid that you know. Uh, was just kind of had his head down, you know. Uh, I don't know. I think he was expecting kind of a different thing, and um, th there's the only love I had outside music since I was a kid was cars, and spent every money I ever had on cars. So I kind of turned up in this quite Swiss car, and he was kind of like, okay. Um, and uh, we I, and I went in and, and we just got on amazingly well, you know. And uh, he's uh, it's like um, you know when you get on with someone on a on level, on a friendship level, on a kind of human level without even doing music, and then you actually get to write some music and you realise that they uh, they just see things how you see them, and that's really rare because uh, most people you work with in the music industry they uh, come from a, diff a slightly different place, you know. And normally what happens is um, your um, ability to compromise with someone um, is not met uh, and therefore it doesn't work out or you don't, you know, otherwise everyone would always work with it, every, yeah. you know. With Tommy, um, there was none of that. There was no, not one element of compromise or anything. I just, uh, everything I did he liked and everything he did I liked and it's that simple. We, we made the record on that basis. I mean, there's a few things production-wise that, that he did that, you know, we, we went over and, you know, we got right. And there's a couple of things writing-wise that I took to him that we kind of worked on. But it wasn't really disagreement. It was more about just making sure we were both happy. It was, uh, it was really, it was really um, an interesting experience, actually. And how come, do you think? Do you, do you have the same background or...? No, I mean, no. No, not really. I mean, <clears throat> he, he definitely grew up on... He grew up on a lot more hip-hop... Um, and rock than I did. Um, I mean, now, you know, I can, I love and can appreciate things like Zeppelin and Hendrix, but I wasn't really as influenced by um, Pink Floyd, Ze Zeppelin, Hendrix, as I was more Carole King, Tim Buckley, Joni Mitchell, Stevie Wonder, you know, I was more into folk music and soul music. So, um, I don't know, it's just, I, I, I don't know what, what made it so magic, but um, it was literally the fact that we just uh, hear things exactly the same way, and it's that, it's that simple. Um, you know, uh, I started when I was 20, and I met Tommy when I was 26. So that's six years in, you know, constantly working with people to find someone that saw everything you did. So that's, um, you know, it took a while. Uh, because you said earlier in the interview that you don't like people telling you what to do. So it must be for you. It must be pretty special then to have someone that you actually well click with. No, exactly. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that um, when I said I like people tell me what to do, I just don't like people tell me what to do with things I think I know more than them about. And um, when it comes to writing, or um, when it comes to um, songs, you know, I, I like to think that I. <clears throat> No, more than anyone else in the world. <laughs> that's always that, you know, when it comes to my own songs, that, that's what I mean, you know, like I know how I want to write. And, um, but in t I'm not a producer and uh, when I met Tommy, um, I know what I like, but, you know, I, I respected the fact that he's, a, you know, he's an amazing producer and, and writer as well, but he, he knew exactly um, what to do. And... Actually, sometimes um, you get to the point where you trust someone so much with their production. Actually, you you know you go with something that you're not 100% about because you're like, okay, you know, I, I, I trust that I'm I'm going to grow to like this kind of thing, you know. And um, <clears throat> Stone Sun was a typical example because when I first heard that, I didn't I didn't know what what was going on. Um, I was expecting uh, kind of a folk blues song, quite melancholy, acoustic, like the rest of my. My stuff, and when he first did Stare in the Sun, it was uh, it was just completely random to me. I didn't know what was going on, and it took me like five or six listens, and then I was, I was, I mean, I, I thought this can't ever be used for anything that I'm doing as a solo project, but it's an amazing uh, angle in the music, and that's how it restarted. Really